all right guys it's that time of the year food plot update uh we've been had this food plot well my food plot in for almost a month now and we only have two rains in a month's time and that was just last week so i mean i can't expect much but uh let me turn you around and see what we got As you can see, we do have some green. Uh, not as much as I would like for a, a month's time in the ground. Uh, but like I said again, you know, we just had rain twice last week. And that's the only rain that we've got on this food plot. And it's not looking that great. Uh, some of the shady spots are doing a little bit better than uh you know the spots that the sun hit most of the time but uh if we get down close and look see what we have uh, a lot of this these bigger plants are those winter peas um you know i, I put the same uh seeds i had last year that beets and greens so it should be some turnips and some um, radishes, which, you know, that's one of the two. I don't know exactly which one. And, you know, that's some of the same deal. Uh, and I threw clover out, too, at the same time. And I don't know if that's them coming up right there at the bottom, which I doubt. That's real small. Uh, I just don't see the clover. You would think that clover would come up before anything else would, but uh, the winter peas is the bulk of what's green out here in this food plot. Uh, back over on this side, uh, I've seen a lot of smaller plants. Uh, I'm just trying to find them. Um, just concentrated more over here like like you can see the little smaller plants uh, hopefully that's some radishes or some turnips but like I said you know you see the cracks in the ground it's just everything just so dry we don't have you know no rain hopefully they got in the forecast for next week 60 percent chance of rain like a couple of days uh, for next week so without the rain our food plots not gonna do very well not here in this tough uh, Georgia clay so we got to pray for some rain oh it's gonna be a tough year for these food plots uh, last year food plots you know grew real quickly because we had a lot of rain and up to last month, we had a lot of rain. And all of a sudden, it just stopped. Uh, like the hurricane just came through South Carolina, North Carolina. But we only got, you know, a little trickle here and a little trickle there of rain. And the hurricane shot up and went north. So that was our big chance to get a good soaking rain. We need a good soaking rain to... Uh, to help these food plots out so I'm just walking right here to the middle and you can see here in the middle if I get down level it looks it looks better that way right <laughs> but uh, like I said most of that are winter peas I, 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 I like the winter peas that's why I put them out there because I like I said one time before I never seen a food plot with just peas in them because the deers eat them up so quick you never see them get any maturity on them but but these seem to be coming up pretty good with no rain I'd be impressed if uh, we got some rain and uh, they shot up another foot within a week 
but I'm just concerned about everything else that I threw out like those those radishes and them turnips like I said in this spot it's real bare and plus I had tons of birds on my food plot uh, on my cameras I just I mean that scared me too hopefully they hadn't ate up all my, my seed that I didn't get covered up but we're gonna walk on back here to the back uh, then this back part that's why I put those uh, that wheat not wheat uh, the oats and those winter peas back here in the back like I said right here where the Sun hits this food plot the most these plants are not doing too well they written they smaller they look like they you know kind of drawed up we got to have that rain so some of you guys up north center some of that rain that you guys complain about and we can't get enough but back here in the back well, I got the trees and everything. Uh, you can see, I mean, the oats are coming up a little bit here and there. You know, it's not, it's not taking over, but it's coming up. And like I said, what can you expect? It's just no rain. So, but the winter peas are coming up back here too, which that's a good thing. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's too early to, to judge. You know, I don't know if you got to, we're going to have to come back and overseed something. Or, I don't know. Like I said, it's just too early. Just too early to even tell. Uh, if we can get some. If we can get some rain, that'll tell a story uh, on what we need. If we need anything else on this thing before it gets too late in the season to uh, to try to help it out. But other than that, guys, um, I did put a rain gauge up in the front. And uh, we'll go up there and look at that. It's got one thing I need to show you up there in the front on one of these trees. I just want to ask you guys' opinion about it. So I'll meet you back up at the uh, pear trees up in the front. All right, guys, we back up here where I planted the uh, the pear trees up in the front before you get to my food plot. Uh, I, a couple of weeks ago, I put a uh, rain gauge on the side of this uh, growing tube. And if we look at the bottom of that rain gauge, it says a half inch. So we did get some rain. But like I said, it was just last week. So we did get a half an inch. Uh, I don't know how much of that's condensation or how much is evaporated. But we did get a half an inch, which is not too bad. Uh, just looking down at this plant here. Uh, it's still doing pretty good. It's still growing. Uh, leaves are starting to turn because, you know, it's at the end of the growing season. Um... This other one though, that's in this other growing tube, it's almost, it peaks out of the tube. And if you can remember when we first put it in there, it was only two to three inches tall. And now, it's trying to come out of the tube. And it's nice and full with leaves and, uh, like I said, next year I'm pretty sure it's going to come on out that tube and probably catch up with these other two this 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 uh you know that I put out that's already grown but what I want to show you guys was this I've had this happen at my house with an apple tree and you might be thinking like what what are you talking about it's just the leaves that fell off of that pear tree and what's the deal true the leaves have fell off of it but if you can look at it starting to bloom again new leaves are coming out 
on every part of this pear tree and it, and it worried me because I had the same thing happen at my house on an apple tree I mean it bloomed nice flowers and everything to me this tree is confused those are seasons this thing is spring when then again it's, it's fall you know it's, it's almost finna turn to winter here in the next month or two and this tree is trying to bloom again I don't know I don't know what that means I, I that's why I want to show you guys for you can have for input on it and have anybody else seen this type of behavior from a tree uh, this is my first time so if you uh, have seen that please leave down in the comments what you think what do you think is going on with the tree but as you can see it's clearly blooming again see it's got a dead leaf right here but a new bloom coming right here beside it it's weird I don't know if that's a sign fellas but but then again it is what it is but uh, one other thing I had uh, one of the subscribers I can't remember who, who it was but asked me why didn't you plant any persimmon trees you know deers love persimmons I said yeah I know they love persimmons but I told him I had a 20 foot persimmon tree right here which now that I look at it it's got to be taller than 20 uh, as you can see I'm gonna try to zoom in uh, on some persimmons but if I can locate them in the camera right there they got a couple this tree this is a whole persimmon tree other than the uh, the cedar tree in front of it but this tree's been here so long and it bears tons of persimmons every year so that's why I didn't plant a persimmon tree but that's about it for the update guys I mean if I take time and ride over to one or two more food plots that we did the same time I did mine I put them here at the end of the, uh, the video but other than that guys that's all I got uh, this morning we did a little bow hunting this morning we did see a seven pointer so uh, I think that's looking up it's still super hot like I said it's getting hot right now and it's just a little bit after 10 30 here in the morning all right guys that's about all I have for today uh, I might take off and go look at one or two other food plots that uh, that we did the same time I did mine just to check see how they doing matter of fact let's go do that I'll meet you over there alright this is uh, Steve's food plot the one uh, we did the same time we did mine and he had the sandy, of, sandy soil but doesn't look very good over here uh, I think his pH or his soil was real low like a 5, 8 or something like that and he's been trying to put lime and, and fertilizer on it to try to get it up but right now it's not looking too good so he definitely needs some rain I hate to see this look like the desert but we're gonna go over to one more here uh, Steve's which I mean Chris's which is Steve's brother uh, the one we did after this one and uh, see what he got going on sorry Steve need to pray for rain brother all right this food plot is uh Chris's food plot uh, we did this at the same time when we did mine and, and Steve's uh, he does have something growing 
which but this food plot holds more moisture in the ground than a lot of the food plots that we have so I knew he'd be a little bit better just cause it holds so much moisture in it but uh, as you can look and see he's got a mix on here it's got oats and peas and clover and some everything in it uh, it does have some green out over the whole thing they said it when it looks like that all it needs is rain it's just sitting there dormant just waiting for the rain to hit it for it to go and grow as you can see over here up under the tree uh, it's growing pretty good in the shade but it just no rain but we got growth it's just no rain oh well just pray to the rain gods please rain gods bring us some rain all we want to do is just hunt that's all we want to do okay guys we got one more I want to show you a little one I hid off in the corner and I did it by myself nobody knows but one or two people that I did it but uh, I gotta throw some fertilizer out on it I didn't get to throw fertilizer on it when I was here last time so we're going to let the sun fall a little bit before we get on that one. We'll meet you over there once that happens. Alright guys, this is my little hideaway food plot that uh, I normally do every year. Uh, it's just, just a little small food plot. But this food plot, I've seen the biggest deer i ever seen on camera in this area. Uh, right here and uh, I've seen good good deers here off and on uh, it's kind of hard to hunt this this location because as you can see it's a, just a basically an old uh, cut over that's grown up you know probably it's probably 12 years of growth on this cut over right now so we don't have any big big trees that you can get in to hunt this but here behind us, I'm going to turn the camera around. On this line here, it's a, uh, it's a pine tree that goes right up here. As a matter of fact, there's two of them. But I get over here on this pine tree. Then up, probably about right here, it's a little look through. You can see the food plot through that little opening from those pine trees behind it but as more and more stuff grows everything grows that that one is getting smaller and smaller uh, but this one thing I gotta do is this pine tree right here once I get back here in the back of the food plot that pine tree is covering that back of the food plot so I gotta take that pine tree down But what we're going to do first is, I planted this back when I planted my food plot. But I never threw any fertilizer on it because I didn't have any left over to throw on it. So I got a bag of fertilizer I'm going to put out on this. And like I said, it's growing pretty good right now just from the one, two rains we had, we had in a month's time. But I got oats. Um in a mix of winter peas and it was a little bag of mix I had left over and I just threw all that stuff on here uh, so hopefully this will keep growing I mean if I look out through it it's plenty of uh, deer tracks through it now because if you can see that that little tree on the end here is that little white looking tree that's the trail that those deers come out of and they walk right through this food plot to go back where those pine trees are so I'm gonna get started on that I'm gonna throw out this fertilizer first then we're gonna cut that tree down and get it out of the way for I can see from the tree that I hunt out of All 
All right, now that we got that fertilizer out, we can move to cutting this tree down. I'm gonna take you guys up to the front of the, well, the back of the food plot and let you see what I'm talking about with uh, my vision on the tree that I get up and hunt out of. All right, if you can see when I pan in here, that pine tree, I'm trying to keep it on where that spot is that I, I normally hunt out of it. It's right in here. And that pine tree, that small pine tree, has grown over the years and now it's covering it up. And I might have to uh, take some of these little bushes out the way too. So, But we're going to start with that pine tree and get that down and see if it opens up. Alright guys, now that we got that pine tree out the way, I want to show you what I was talking about. If we zoom in, you see that little hole right there. That's the little hole that I get up in to be able to see this food plot. And now it's back open. I don't have to cut anything else, I don't believe. And that way I can see this whole food plot from that little opening and those deers don't have no clue that I'm right there so whoo I kinda tired from cutting that tree down but that's what I'm talking about right there alright guys I think we are done for the day it's, it's Sunday it's still early maybe I can get home and watch a couple football games before the day's over but uh... Like always, guys, I appreciate you watching the videos. And let's get this subscriber count up. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification button. And you can see uh, all my upcoming videos. Uh, I'm going to try a couple different things here coming up. Uh, different kind of videos. Uh, uh, one that I want you guys help on is I'm going to do uh, the funny, the craziest things you see on trail cameras. So if you got a uh, crazy thing you've seen on one of your trail cameras, send it to me. I'm going to put a video together that has uh, those type things in it for everybody can you know, get a kick off of. So I'm going to put my email down in the description and you can just email it to me hopefully. If not, we'll try to figure out some other way. But uh, one other thing I got um, Georgia Deer Hunting is a guy that's a subscriber and we come say back and forth uh, and he made a comment the other day that, that got me thinking and I want to talk to you guys about uh, he was watching one of my uh, my dove hunting video the first time with dove hunting he, and he said that you know that's the first time I've seen you kill anything on your channel and I got to thinking about that and, and and what I told him I was like well you know it's one of those things I don't I don't go out just to kill. Uh, I'm very selective. Uh, what happened to me was, I'm gonna put a picture up of the deer I killed that, that, that's normally in my back of my office on some of those videos. Uh, we call that deer Freak Nasty. 
He was a 15 pointer and I hunted that deer for two years and didn't look at another deer, didn't even think about another deer, but that one deer and just happened one day, two years after I started, he just come walking out and uh, I was able to harvest him. So, but since then, that's almost three, almost going on four years ago, I haven't killed a deer since. And the reason why is that deer basically took me to the next level of hunting that I can't go back down. You know, at, at first, you know, a couple of does, yeah, you know, we, I was happy to get a couple of does, but now that I got a deer on my wall, like freak nasty, it's just not enough to kill a, you know, a six, seven point or something like that, just to be, you know, getting meat or anything. Uh, so to me, that day turned me into a trophy hunter. And since then, I, like I said, I hadn't killed a deer, I hadn't killed a doe, I hadn't killed you know, a buck, anything since that day. But here, this this season, I said, well, I'm gonna take one or two does because I do eat deer sausage. That's probably about all I eat of, you know, deer, well, me cooking it anyway. But, so, I mean, just to answer the question, well, it wasn't a question, it was a statement that Georgia Deer Hunters uh, put out there was, if you don't have to go out and kill every time you go hunting. Uh, what I did was I turned to being a stewardship of the land. That's when I really got into food plots and, and, and trying to grow the deer to match what I got on the wall. So if you don't take time to put back into the woods or into the ground what you try to harvest the animal off of, you will never get a trophy uh, to put on your wall or to be able to brag to your boys or send pictures to people or put them on the internet that type of thing you have to put the time into the land to be able to reap the benefits of the land so that's when I turned to food plotting trying to grow the biggest fullest food pot I could because I know in turn that's gonna grow the deers that I'm looking for so I mean just that's that that's basically all my little spiel on that I just want to talk to you guys about that and see what your thoughts was about that so if you could just just leave a couple comments on it and uh, other than that guys I'm gonna get out of here try to get back home and to the next video we out